Hi, this is Genalyzer. This is going out again to my friends at the Energy Builders Network. Uh, this is a continuation of the multi-chambered bubbler. Um, I probably will create a series of detailed steps on how to create this bubbler, uh, but for this particular video, I do want to take go over um, the pretty much completed version of this and to show you some of the techniques and some of the things I've done to overcome some difficulties that I've had in getting this thing constructed. First thing I wanted to show you is that I'm using PVC Schedule 40. Uh, four inch diameter is what I'm using. I find that the four inch diameter along with the inch and a half tubing for the secondary bubbler works out very well. I chose 12 inches, a 12 inch piece for the bubbler. I felt in, for my use that this would take and be adequate. You can actually choose any length that you want and make the bubbler any size that you want. Again, I have chosen 12 inch. What I do want to show you is that now on the top, I have a collar that's been glued in place, and I also have in the bottom another collar. What this is used for is the compression rings. The rings that you saw in the last video, you know, are actually is compression rings, which will take and fit inside and actually be pushed against the collar from top and from the bottom to create a very, very tight seal. Okay. To go along with the compression, what I'm using also is eighth inch thick four inch O-rings. Each of these, one on top and one on bottom, will help to seal the chamber. It'll seal it and make it airtight as well as watertight. The way I constructed those collars is I took a, a drop-off piece of PVC, cut a ring off of it, and actually cut two of them, and then notched the ring. All right, I kept whittling the notch down so that it would fit inside my tube very tightly. What you're looking for is a very tight joint. Let's see if I can is a very tight joint where they come together. All right, this is what you're looking for. What you also want to do is when you get ready to glue this down, I recommend you use a tri-square, set it to the depth that you want, in my case half an inch, and then push down on it while it's being glued. Run it around completely, pushing down and making sure that it stays in place to give you a perfect one half inch or whichever depth that you're using all the way around and so it seats. I'm using a half an inch because my plate, my compression plate is made of quarter inch and my O-rings are eighth inch. Okay. Now for the secondary bubbler, what I want to take and show you and let you guys know is what I have found for the female collars and male collars, what I have found is that there, if you purchase from Lowell's or, and from Home Depot, there is a difference between the two. What I require is a very tight seat against the two male and female adapters. The reason for this, and I want it to be just hand tight, I don't want this to be uh, used uh, machine tight, meaning I don't want to have to put a wrench on it. I want to be able to tighten it down as almost clear to the surface and what you see that it's got very little gap and the reason that that's desirable is when I put my compression rings on and tighten these down hand tight that I get a very nice seal all along the edge. Again, what I discovered was if I use the male adapters and a female adapter from Home Depot, what I found was trying to screw them down hand tight left a serious gap. Let's see if I can show this. Because there's a, there's a large, large gap in between here. And that'll never work. That'll never do. Buy your male and female adapters at Lowell's. Okay? Now, the construction, what I suggest is while you're constructing, 
make sure that you do not glue anything together until you have actually done a complete dry fit. The reason you want to do that is simply because you may not know and you may not get your collars in the exact place that you want and you may find that by when you try to compress them together that something is either too long or too short. So my recommendation is, is as you're building each of the pieces, build them first, dry fit them, fit them into the unit, test them first, and then glue them up. I've actually made several um, iterations of this simply because I did not do that. All right, so just as a warning, okay. What I now, what I also want to show you is some things that I am now adding to. Uh, before I do that, let me show you my various chambers. I've also constructed these various chambers. If you notice, each one has a little bit different length. This one here is, is got a bit of a length there. This one is a little bit shorter, and so forth. Again, what you want to do is when you build these, build them and dry fit them. Don't glue them together until you're sure that they're actually what you want and need. Okay. This one you'll see that the end caps that I put in the last time, there's end caps here. Um, I haven't drilled that. That's because this one is not being used. This was actually too long. I glued it too quickly. The top part, on the very top part, what I've done now is sealed it off. You notice that I have holes drilled uh, into the unit. That's to allow the gas to get in there. And if you can kind of look, you'll see that there is now stainless steel wool pad. What I have got, I got a hold of the stainless steel scrubbies and broke those up into pieces and filled this particular chamber with it. Okay, I have a hole on the top because this is where I'm going to have my gas come out of, and you'll see how that goes together. I have tapped a hole for a quick connect which can be screwed down very quickly and also do not forget to use Teflon tape on all of these fittings. You want this thing to be airtight. Right now for demonstrations purposes um, I will not do that. I won't put any on there. Okay. All right. 